Welcome to this soul lifting broadcast, which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness common right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. with your presence. We're here for an encounter with your spirit. Lord, we're not here for amusement. We're not here for entertainment. We're here for an encounter. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you move over us this morning. To the end that somebody may enjoy the pleasures of your presence. Hold bound everything contrary to your move in our midst. As you move over us this morning, we thank you for healing. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for healing in our hearts, healing in our bodies, healing in our emotions. The word says they look unto you and they were lightened and they were not ashamed. If someone came into this service today with any form of shame, we ask that you wipe the shame away in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there's anyone here right now, anyone joining on the internet, anyone joining from any of our centers with a heavy heart, Father of life, roll the burdens away. Let the oil of joy come upon everyone here. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, our Father. Wave your hands to him one more time all over this place. Just bless him. Just bless him. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We appreciate the presence of your spirit. We appreciate the presence of your spirit. We appreciate the presence of your spirit. I pray with some people here this morning, somebody with some kind of pain in your right hair, here, or some kind of partial deafness, hearing problem. I'd love to pray for you this morning. If you're here right now, put your hand there. Put your hand there. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I stand against that spirit of infirmity. Put an hand to that harassment of the devil. We speak healing 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 to you right now we command every impediment removed in the name of Jesus break the hold of the spirit of deafness and I command you go in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you father thank you father I want to pray for someone here this morning with something moving in your body. It feels like something is moving in your body. And the issue has not been resolved. I think it's medical, you've gone through some tests, but still nothing. I'd love to pray for you this morning. Can you put your hand on your heart as I say this prayer? If you're the person I'm talking about right now. It looks like something moves in your body to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you reveal to redeem. We ask that your power will move through this congregation right now, through everyone watching online. I declare an end to that harassment of the devil in the life of this person. I speak the covering of the blood of Jesus over you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare it a no harassment zone. In the name of Jesus, anything that God has not planted in your body, I command you, I command that thing to leave your body 
now in the name of Jesus father we thank you father we thank you in the first service God gave me a word for someone whom you know I mean in your heart something has just been telling you that God is turning your way you've waited a bit now for the fruit of the womb can I pray for you that something happens in the month of June father we thank you for anyone who has suffered a delay who has come to that season of life to become a joyful mother of children prayer when I say prayer you still experience it maybe this morning maybe in the past week it comes and goes it can be very terrible I want to speak an end to it right now Lord in the name of Jesus we stand against that migraine headache whatever may be associated with it whatever may be causing, causing it I declare in the name of Jesus move over these bodies right now move over every organ in their body let your healing power saturate their body right now we speak an end to that migraine headache and we speak peace over your life in the name of Jesus somebody lift your hand to Jesus and bless him for the supply of the spirit this morning bless him, bless him praise God I said praise God somebody believe that God has healed the sick in our midst this morning can you put your hands together celebrate Jesus hallelujah anytime you come into the service it's important for you to consciously release your faith when we pray for the sick for instance your situation may not be called but God is still moving yeah so don't practice spectatorship when you come to church yeah it's okay to look at people and appreciate what they're wearing and all that but don't make that your preoccupation you didn't come for a show you came to meet with God is that okay I said, is that okay? Yeah. Because as we emphasize the move of the Spirit in the midst of us this month, somebody needs to become a lot more conscious of the workings of the Spirit in your life. And it's by taking distractions away that you're able to do that effectively. Yeah. By taking distractions away, by making up your mind, I don't want to be distracted. Yeah. You know, some people come to church, there's nothing on their mind. Their mind is blank. They don't have any business in church as in literally so the devil can borrow those people to distract other people <laughs> yeah because they didn't come with any anticipation of anything they just showed up yeah those are the kind of people that the word may be going on very strongly they just feel like let me go and pee and it's not like they are really pressed yeah because the same people will be pressed in traffic and hold the pee but, but because the word is not important that important it's not that serious then you walk to the washroom meet somebody you greet yeah word of 35 to 40 minutes 15 minutes out of it you went to use it to pee yeah and then as you walk in and out you are distracting people because sometimes somebody needs just one word something to connect in their spirit and it's why they are looking at you at walking up and down. You are not a cat. <laughs> That's when they just get distracted. Can I beg of somebody this season? All I'm trying to say is be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. In the first service, I spoke to people about, you know, people also who have the habit of just walking out of service. The moment it looked like we're almost rounding up with the preaching. Yeah. And it's not like you have any serious appointment nothing is going wrong out there or you just have that feeling that this is Lagos everybody has to be in a holy people that have business people who don't have you know as in you know Lagos spirit just get on the road there right now road rage is permanent in Lagos yeah except for some of us I'm assuming, who drive easily on the road. The average person in Lagos 
is in a hurry. And if you are not careful, they want to hurry you off the road. And if we continue to live that way, we can't keep in pace with the Spirit of God. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, stay where you are. And you need to be able to stay. Because for some people, it's instinctive. You don't even think about it. Yeah. Just want to rush away. Want to move. Want to do this. Want to do that. The Bible says the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Men of strength will not always win. But it's time and chance that happen to them all. And it's when you are in sync with the Spirit that you can embrace time and chance. Yeah. The Holy Spirit just say hey, where you are. Just, just, yeah. Just say hello to that person. Don't be in a hurry. And then you say hello to the person and you realize that the person knows the person who is sitting on your fire. You know in Nigeria they love to sit on fire. As if it's a chair. You know the way you say somebody is sitting on the fire. Yeah. But it's when we are calm. When we are willing to extend fellowship. When we are willing to meet people. You come to church. Some people come to church. They behave like free radicals. Yeah. Like Mekisedek. No beginning of day, no end of day. You know, they don't want to connect with anybody. They don't want, you know. See, I understand. Some of us have been to places where people are not nice. And they've, they've done wrong things to you. Yeah. So now that you are in this church, for instance, you say, I just want to mind my business. I understand. As the pastor, I will allow you to mind your business for a while but I will get on your business. Yes, after a period of time. Because that's not God's original intention. They that are planted in the house of God, the Bible says, will flourish in the courts of our God. If you want to flourish in the, in the courts of our God, you need to be planted. And when you are planted, you take and give. You take from the ground, you give to your world. So you can't be taking and not giving. And I'm not talking only about money. I'm talking about being a blessing to people. And asking, how can I be a vital part of what God is doing here? People give testimony. The church is blessing lives. And then you want to be a part of it. You may be a busy executive. You don't have time to function in the regular workforce. Ask us what you can do. You can serve on a committee that just worked for 30 days and is disbanded. You can, you can do anything. You can, you can give us idea about something that we need to do differently. And say, I, I will monitor the project for you. Just that project. I don't want to do more than that. It's okay. You can imagine if everybody in this church decides that in one year I want to serve God for what is an equivalent of one month and do something in the area of my strength. You can imagine what our church will look like, especially in our capacity to bless more people. Yeah. This is not a church of superstar. The pastors can solve the problem, all the problems that we have in this church, all the, the problems that comes with the people that God is sending to us. Somebody here needs wisdom. You have that wisdom. Somebody needs to come out of a situation. Somebody needs a funding problem that you can solve. You know how people can get funds for their business. Yeah. Somebody needs to set up something. You have the technical know-how for it. It's not everything you have to get paid for. Do it for free in church. That's what we're asking for. But until you connect, we don't know what you carry. Can you tell, tell your neighbor for me it's time to connect? Tell your neighbor, say, start with me. Oh, yeah, I'll give you one minute. Connect. <laughs> I'm serious. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Some people are still laughing. I said, connect, connect. That's what I said. Yeah. It's my preaching time, so it's one minute. I'm giving you. Talk to somebody. Meet somebody. Some people are looking at me as if I'm the somebody. The person that's sitting beside you. Yeah. How are you? What's your name? This is my name. This is what I do. You know, just meet with somebody. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, so when the service is over, don't rush away. That person that you're connected with, you can continue the discussion. Yeah. And then get a little more settled and then start to ask us questions about different things, you know, how you can be a part of what is going on here. It's very important. 
We don't want to have a bunch of free radicals, people who nobody knows, no accountable to anybody, you don't know anybody in church, and you still say, elevation is my church, we're elevated. <laughs> Yet, you don't know anybody in church. Some people don't even know the name of the pastor. <laughs> yeah. You're that disconnected. You don't want to know anybody. You don't want to know anything. Yeah. I meet people who say, say which church do you go? They mention, no, they say, the redeem. I say, which parish? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've met people like that. That's how I open my mouth, too. I say, ah, you can't even know the name of the parish. Right? So I, I should not ask you the name of the pastor because you don't even know the name of the parish. Yeah. That's how some people are, really. <laughs> Praise God. Let's get into the word of God. Let's get into the word of God. Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, I'll read verse 17, 18, and 19. Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read from verse 17, 18, and 19. If you're joining us online, I want to take distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed with the word of God. And if you're in any of our centers, Greater Lekki, Milan Center, it's good to have you join this service today. Pray that the blessing of God will rest upon you right there in Jesus' name. Ephesians 1, 17, 18, and 19, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. And revelation. Somebody say revelation. revelation. In the knowledge of God. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I love that last statement. What is the ex exist exceeding greatness of his power towards us, towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Praise God. The Holy Spirit has been our subject matter as we started this series on the game changer, the Holy Spirit. And I'd love to start out this morning by getting somebody up to speed with this understanding. That it's very tempting for you to want to rely on your natural human intelligence for everything that has to do with successful living. Very tempting, very tempting. But it's important for you to understand that life is beyond intelligence quotients. quotients. So there are emotional, social, and supernatural sides to life. And the Holy Spirit wants to help us in all those areas also. He wants to help us. He wants to be a part of what we're doing in the different departments of our lives. You cannot ex ex excel in different areas of wisdom and aptitude without the help of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit does not operate in unidimensional wisdom, but omnidimensional wisdom. That means his wisdom is all-encompassing. His, you know, his wisdom is all-encompassing. It's omnidimensional wisdom. It's all-encompassing. The Holy Spirit knows about relationships. He knows about software development. He knows project management. Yeah, he knows construction. Yeah. The Holy Spirit knows about fashion. Yeah, he does. He does. He knows. He knows about everything and anything. He was with God from the beginning before the creation of the universe. He knows everything. And that's the person that's been appointed to be your helper. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the scope of our destiny and the capacity that we have. That's what he does. He helps us to understand the scope of our destiny and our capacity. There are many things you will never get to know about yourself until you start to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There are many dimensions of your business that you will never get to know about until you start to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There are many, many things 
that will always escape our mind, that we may never be able to lay hold on until we start to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, the people that know you the most are the people who have known you all your life or the people who are closest to you. But Jesus carried out a test in Matthew 16. He asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? <laughs> and this was after they have spent a lot of time with him, sleeping and waking up and moving around the whole place with him. And the things that they were saying showed the limit of their understanding because it was limited to their intellectual level. Yeah. On to what they can perceive. So they started putting him in a box. Just like some of your friends do. And some of your family members do. Some young people here now are totally frustrated because maybe your parents are thinking, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Your friend said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You think this is what you're supposed to be doing. Everybody has an idea of what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Somebody may be listening to me right now. You're, 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 you're moving in between career. You're changing career. You're moving from paid employment to business. Yeah. Or somebody has been in business for a while now. You're second guessing yourself and thinking, maybe I should go and look for a job. What you need is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> When Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Some said you are John the Baptist. They put him in a box. Yeah. Of that person who came before him. Some said you are Elijah or Jeremiah. Or said one of the prophets. <laughs> Can you imagine the size of his person and his destiny? The savior of the world, the Messiah that Israel had waited for? For hundreds and hundreds of years, between Jesus and the prophecy of Isaiah in Isaiah 53, where he was talking about the Messiah, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, by his stripes we were healed, is over 400 years. That prophecy and the manifestation. Now, the person came and he said, after a while, he had manifested a bit and he said, Who do men say that I am? He said, you are Jeremiah. <laughs> or John the Baptist. When John the Baptist himself said, the person that's coming after me, he said, his sandal straps I cannot, you know, I can't touch. Yeah. Peter said, in verse 18, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. What did Jesus say? He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. <laughs> Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven. When you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, that's what you get. You're not limited to flesh and blood. Some people are living at the realm of flesh and blood revelation right now. Yeah. Let people tell you, yeah, ah, I know. I know you can do it. Yeah. The best of motivational speaking is flesh and blood. <laughs> are you still with me? Say, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Go for it. But you can be going the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. It's still flesh and blood. What about if the spirit is so in tune with you, or you're so in tune with the spirit, to the end that the spirit of God can reveal who you are to you. The greatness of his power towards us who believe. That we can understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Because that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. Just revealing to us who we truly are. When you start to walk with the Holy Spirit, you learn never to say never. Yeah. Somebody's listening to me right now. You've told everybody. I don't have any shred of entrepreneurial in my DNA. I'm a worker. I just love to, just, I just do my work, you know. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. You need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And let him confirm that to you before you limit your destiny. Yeah. Let him confirm that to you. Be fully persuaded. Yeah. Let it not be a flesh and blood revelation. Let it be a revelation that comes with the Holy Spirit. The only issue is how deep do you want to go with him? How far do you want to go with him? How far do you want to go with him? 
Do you really want to know this Holy Spirit? The most intelligent person on earth is foolish compared to the Holy Spirit because the intelligence is in one direction. Can you imagine a multi-directional intelligence that is not narrowed in one way? When you compare one degree to 360 degree, it's foolishness. Am I saying the truth? That's what I mean by that. Yeah. Because we have very smart people in this world. Yeah. People are smart in real estate, smart in IT, smart in this, smart in that. Yeah. That's why somebody can be smart in IT and terrible in marriage. Yeah. And cannot marry a computer. Yeah. That's to marry a human being. So ride the best software in town, but you're making a lady run mad at home. The Holy Ghost wants to help you. Yeah? He wants to help you in that area. He has what it takes to make your life more rounded. That's what I'm saying. And it's when you yield to him and you submit to him. Somebody can be intelligent with, with music, with sound, with you know, entertainment, but very terrible with money. Yeah. They make the money, the money goes down the drain. The Holy Spirit is the best money manager on earth. Can help you deal with your personal finances to the end that, you, you, you know, you have a more rounded life. You know some people, even some of the stars that we see, we call them stars, they are broke. Yeah. Because they're good in one direction, but they're terrible in the other direction. And if you're a Christian, you're not supposed to live that kind of life. Everybody thinks that you, you have a lot, but you are broke because you are terrible at managing money. But when you start to listen to the Holy Spirit, it tells you, slow down there. Invest here. Don't invest there. Don't put your money here. Put it here. Yeah. This is what you'll be a part of. Hold that money. Use it for this purpose. That's what happens when you start to relate with the Holy Spirit. So you need the Holy Spirit and he longs to be your helper. He longs to be your helper and friend. You know, I'm discussing, I'm sure you're already aware, building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, I need to also understand something. John 4 and verse 23. The Bible says the time is now where God I mean, where the people who worship God must worship him in spirit and truth because God is seeking salt to worship him. The Holy Spirit does not reject people. You know, in a relationship, all of us have been there. And some people are there right now. I'm talking about singles. Yeah. Where you are looking for connection. Who to connect with. Maybe you want to marry or you just want to, have, just want to have a friend, a girlfriend or something. The only problem is that you don't know whether the person also likes you or not. So you test the waters a bit. Yeah. Try to get close and be a nice guy. Yeah. Send a gift. Do all that. But sometimes it looks like everything you're doing, just entering voice me, voice me, voice me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what some guys don't know? You think that your gift should open the heart of a woman. What you don't understand is that some hearts are closed. There's no amount of gift that will open it. And some people have the gift of collecting gift. It's just their area of speciality. They love gift. So if you meet that kind of person, and you think because they are receiving your gift, they have already opened up to... No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The relationship we have with the Holy Spirit is not the type where I'm not sure whether this person wants me. God says, I'm seeking those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. He himself is after us. He's chasing us. So when we chase him, two lovers collide. Two lovers just collide. Yeah. That's what happens when we chase him. 
So I'm not chasing aloof. I'm not chasing, you know, not knowing what will happen. He's already chasing us. The Bible says, while we are yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And was the one that promised the supply of the Spirit. That I will send you another helper. John 14, John 16. Jesus was just talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, I want to send you the Holy Spirit. I know you need help. I want to be your helper. And the Holy Spirit is always watching out for us, looking out for us. Looking out for us. Glory be to Jesus. So true, meaningful relationship with God is a spiritual and intimate experience. It's a spiritual and intimate experience. It's a spiritual and intimate experience. God is looking out for me already. He just expects me to, to step out and also look out for him. And then we meet. And then it's, 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 it's an intimate experience. I was saying in the first service, you know, the past week, I think uh, maybe I left Lagos on Wednesday morning or something like that. I was in Patakot for two days, Abuja for two days, speaking at conferences. Uh, so like last five days or so, I've been out of town. So every morning, I call my wife, hi babe, what's up, how are you doing? Did you sleep well? You know, and all that, so we'll chat for a few minutes, or how are the girls, you know, and all that. Okay, I'll call you in the afternoon after my morning session. So then, call again, and then in the evening, before we go to bed, we we'll talk. Can you imagine if this past five days, I've not spoken to my wife, and we're not fighting. Even if we're fighting, eh, we should resolve it and keep the communication going. And then when I come back, we now resolve our issue, right? That's how to run a good relationship. For some of you now, the Holy Ghost is reporting you to the Father. Daddy, I've not seen Rosneo since last week. <laughs> and she has not called. She has not done anything. That's the kind of relationship that you're keeping. Yeah. And you say you're not hearing from the, Holy, from the Holy Spirit. How will you hear from somebody that you are not even interested in connecting with? It's supposed to be an intimate relationship. The one that you remember that you carry the Holy Spirit in the morning, you want to talk to him. As you're driving, thoughts come into your heart. You remember something that you're struggling with. You say, Holy Spirit, you need to help me with this. I need wisdom. You know, some people think that praying, your prayer life is only the time that you put together and you lock the door and say, it's me and God today, oh, it's me and God today. And then you pray 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 that is good but what god really wants is a continuous communication yeah continuous communication i'm working at office at, in my office you know and all of a sudden i realize that there's a thought that i've not been able to get off my mind then i pause for two three minutes i say jesus you need to help me with this thought this particular issue is becoming an issue of concern i'm a bit anxious about it and just take your time and just pray and then as you pray, the Holy Spirit will just bring, you know, maybe a scripture to your heart. Philippians 4, and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And as that scripture gets there, you start to meditate on it. As you meditate on the scripture, you are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's what is happening. It's not until you lock up yourself one weekend. I'm not going anywhere. I don't want to see anybody. Yeah. You know, some people don't, they don't do anything about situations until they become emergencies. Yeah. Somebody just shows, shows up and says, hey, hey, if I don't pay my rent by tomorrow, they will chase me out. So, all this while, what have you been doing? What did the Holy Spirit tell you? Did he send it to anybody? Because it's not, everybody cannot solve your problem. But when you go to the right person that God directs you to, and God leads people, whether somebody's going to provide you a job so that you can be paid and pay your rent, or somebody's going to give you the money directly, anyhow it's going to happen. But this one that you're just there, living in fear, living in anxiety, even your prayers are motivated by fear, not because you love God. Don't be a prayer warrior that is worried. It's time to cultivate the right kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Can you imagine if I, I greet my wife 
in the morning I say I love you and the only reason why I'm doing it is because if I don't do it, there will be a fight. Or she will beat me. That's how some of, that's how some of us relate with, with God and with the Holy Spirit. Ah, if you don't pray this morning, God will be angry with you. Everything you do today will not work. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only motivation for some people to pray. Ah, I, I want to appease God. Today is a very important day. <laughs> Nothing must go wrong today. We are Jesus. I beg. <laughs> there's no relationship. There's no, you know. We don't pray because we're afraid that God will knock our head or God will make everything go wrong. No, we pray primarily. We fellowship with the Holy Spirit because we want to cultivate a relationship. Are you still with me today? I want to talk to my lover. I want to talk to somebody I'm connected to. I want to talk to the sustainer of my life, the one who has my best interests at heart, the one who says my thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to take you to the expected end, the one who says I'm the one that is thinking about you the most in the whole world. And my thoughts to you, towards you, are good thoughts, not bad thoughts. Yeah. So I want to talk to that person. I want to relate with that person. The way some of you dance around your benefactors or oh, <laughs> Uh, you should dance around God more than that. Yeah. Because somebody got you a job. You have to call the person all the time. Ah, thank you, sir. The work is going well. Yes. When can I come and see you? You know. Uh -huh. And then you go, yeah, that's a time waster there. The person has gotten you a job. Back off. Go and do the work well so that he can promote you. Yeah. <laughs> go, and do the, go and do a good job so you can get promotion. Yeah. Just be loitering around. Go and loiter around God and the Holy Spirit. It can open much more doors than that which the person has opened to you. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. It's also important to note that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to cramp your style. He wants to help you to attain the highest level of life and do the will of the Father. Some people, you know, sometimes are, they are afraid of the Holy Spirit or, you know, they don't want to connect because they feel that if I start talking to the Holy Spirit now, ah, you can say I should leave my friends and I don't want to leave my friends. You know, when we were growing up, they told us something. They said that if you're a young man, you're looking for somebody to marry, it's most likely that the Holy Spirit will tell you to go for somebody that's not fine. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, the Holy Spirit... Uh, <laughs> All kinds of doctrines that almost messed up our minds. Yeah. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may lead you to take a job that will pay less than what you expect because he knows the end from the beginning. But that's not the only thing he does. Because some people think if you ask the Holy Spirit about a job, he will just send you to the place where they will pay you the least. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit is always teaching us long suffering. <laughs> <laughs> teaching us how to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> and those are the things that have messed up many people's mind. People want to, you know, hold back. Yeah. And then, you know, the Christianity that we, some of us met on ground is that as when people become more entrenched with the Spirit, their lives become boring. Yeah. They think in one straight jacket and there's a particular way they dress. When you see them, ah, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> so if that kind of a person tells you to become, to strengthen your relationship with the Holy Spirit, say, so that I can become like this. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> can I tell you the truth? The Holy Spirit doesn't want to cramp anybody's style. Yeah. He wants to enhance your style and enhance your life and give your life a boost. That's what he wants to do. Yeah. He wants to give your life a boost. The Holy Spirit wants to give your life a boost. The Holy Spirit is not in us accessible, complex, or spooky. No. It's not. Yes, he is God. Yes, he's all powerful, but he's also accessible and can be understood. Yeah. It's accessible and can be understood. You know, for, let me explain, for a, a guy, a 
best way you can understand what I'm saying is, let's assume that somebody introduced you to Obama's daughter when Obama was in office as president. And then you are expecting to meet a very complicated young lady who will not understand you, who, you know, will be so high-minded, and then you met somebody who is, you just came to your level. So you sat, you sat on the rock together. You are gisting. They brought granite and, you know, and what? Help me. Whatever. And then you are eating it together. Whatever brings you down to, you know, some people want to do certain things, their, their body doesn't calm down. Because it reminds you of where you are coming from. So it just gets you to, when you are drinking Gary, you understand that kind of thing. Yeah. And it just reminds you that, you know, you may be highly placed, but this Gary is a leveler. Thanks a lot. The Holy Spirit wants to operate with us like he, that's how he is. Sometimes we misunderstand it. Oh, it's the Spirit of God. He knocks people down. It's the Spirit of God, you know. He overwhelms people. People will be crying and be me in their mouth. That's what some people think. When you remember Holy Spirit, that's what some people think. That's all they think about. No. The Holy Spirit knows you, understands you, knows your personality, and he will reach out to you and operate with you based on your frame, your form, your personality, your own temperament. If you are not the crying type, the Holy Spirit will not make you cry. Yeah. Because there's no point losing you. If it's by being frank with you, that he will operate with you, he will be frank with you. Yeah. If you are the crying type, he will love to cry with you. So you will come like this, you feel his presence, you just start to cry. It's the Holy Spirit. Say, I'm here. Holy Spirit, yeah, he's here with you. That's why you see some people in a, in a meeting where the Holy Spirit is moving, people are falling down, they are not falling. They don't have a demon. And the people who are falling don't have a demon also. When people fall, it's not because the demon is falling them down. It's the overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit. And the way it works in people's lives are different. Yeah. Because if everybody's falling down here now, somebody did not fall and stand and say, hey, that's the demon. <laughs> that's that one that's not, that's not, that's not falling. Glory be to Jesus. Look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Glory be to Jesus. First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, 5, and 6. First Corinthians 12, verse 4. It said there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same spirit. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God, who works all in all. So, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So there are differences of operation, diversities of gift. The Holy Spirit moves in different ways based on who he's dealing with. But it's the same Holy Spirit. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, it's the same Holy Spirit. I just need to understand him for myself. For myself. It's the same Holy Spirit. Diversities of administration or movement or manifestation, but the same Spirit. The same Spirit. Because some people believe that uh, until something, the roof is tearing, something is happening, the Holy Spirit is not moving. That's what some people believe. First Kings 19. First Kings chapter 19. Elijah had an encounter with the Holy Spirit or with God. And in verse 11, the Bible says, he saw, he, he, you know, he said, then, then he said, go out and stand in the mountain, on the mountain, before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. See, God passed by. And look at all the things that happened. A great strong wind tore into the mountain, broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still, small voice. That was how God chose to talk to Elijah in that situation. A still, small voice. If Elijah was carried away by the rock splintering all over the place, fire burning. Because at that time, I'm sure Elijah was already an emotional wreck. All those things were just looking like until God spoke a still small voice. That was what he needed at that time. How do you want to relate with the Holy Spirit? 
He knows you before, beyond what you think about. And that's how he wants to relate with you. He wants to come down to your level. Yeah. So that he can take you to his level. Glory be to Jesus. As I started, you know, tidy this all up. I want you to understand something. You cannot build intimacy from transactional relationships. You cannot build intimacy from transactional relationships. What we have is a father, not a genie. Many people want to relate with God as a genie. So it's a genie. Have you watched some of those movies before? Genie, tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. And then the genie, whoosh, and then tell, say something. No, that's not what we have. We have a father, not a genie. So you cannot build intimacy on transactional relationship. Many people just want to get into trouble and then call on God and then he answers, but there's no relationship. And God says, I'm seeking relationship. The Holy Spirit says, I'm seeking relationship. Yeah. So we do not pray or worship and, you know, do all those things out of compulsion, but to water our relationship with God. That's why we do it. We do it to water our relationship with God. Not because we are compelled to do it. Not because if I don't pray before I go to work, my car is going to break down on the road. God is not the devil. The devil is one that prays with fear. Yeah. You should pray before you leave home. But if by any chance you did not, be praying as you are going. And you get to where you are going safely. Yeah. God doesn't chase his people down because, eh, you didn't have time for me this morning. I'll catch you in front. I'll catch you in front. Yeah. That's the way some people just have this mindset but why don't you make the fellowship of the Holy Spirit a regular part of your life like we do in regular human relationships so building friendship with God is not different from how you build friendship with man how do you build friendship with man show interest in each other's lives yeah so show interest in the word of God show interest in the things of the spirit meditate on scriptures the, the, the word and the spirit are the same. When my mind dwells on the word of God, I'm inviting the Holy Ghost into my life. Yeah, because it's the one that activates the word in the life of a believer. Have open communication and mutual access. In a good friendship, neither party denies access. Yeah. You call me on the phone, I pick. When I don't have the time to pick, I say, let's talk at this time. But I keep the communication line open. Because some people only pray when they come to church. The Bible talks about uh, uh, what flows, when we keep the communication line open. And when we are not jittery about anything, when we believe that God has forgiven every sin and we can approach him. Hebrews 4 and verse 6 says, Let us therefore now come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can find grace and mercy to help in the time of trouble. Verse 16, sorry, verse 16. Verse 16, find grace and mercy to help in time of trouble. What, what happens is, you know, when we come boldly to God, two things are made available, grace and mercy. Grace gives me what I don't deserve, so merited favor. Yeah. Mercy withholds what I deserve. Yeah. Because I can have what I don't deserve, but if I have what I deserve, it will destroy everything. But when God gives grace, he wants to give mercy. And that is available in his presence. When I live my life running from pillar to post, I don't have time for God. I don't have time to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'm drawing away from his presence where grace and mercy are available. Grace is when God gives me what I don't deserve. Yeah. Don't envy somebody that gets a job that they don't qualify for. Just pray for them that they will be able to be capacity to deliver. But that God gave them, don't query God. That's what grace is all about. Are you still with me? Yeah. That's what grace is all about. But mercy, on the other hand, is a messed up. And this is the repercussion. But God says, mercy prevails over judgment. So I push in mercy and I withdraw judgment. Yeah. Grace pushes something to me Mercy withdraws what is coming to me. And that's what is available in God's presence. 
That's what some people are running away from. Yeah. That's what some people are running away from. That's what you need to be running towards. Because God says when you come into my presence, there's grace and there's mercy to help in time of trouble. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Have a sense of accountability. That's what happens in relationships. We have a sense of accountability. We want to be accountable to somebody. The Holy Spirit wants you to be accountable to him. Review your day with the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I knew ah, that meeting that we had. I think I spoke too much. Ah, tell Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I knew I gossip today. I need help. Yeah, I need help. I don't want to be gossiping like that again. You know, you review your day with the Holy Spirit. That's how you talk to a friend, you know. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you, okay, 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 it's not that bad. Next time, just make sure you close your mouth when, especially when that person is around because you know that that person likes gist. Yeah, so, you hold that, and then you, you start to get better. Yeah. Then the Holy Spirit takes it from there to something else that is more important for your destiny. Glory be to Jesus. So, be conscious of the Holy Spirit by spending time in the Word in worship, and in prayers. Be conscious of the Holy Spirit by spending time in worship, in the world, and in prayers. It's called conversations with God. Be deliberate about understanding the positive side of the supernatural, which is available in the Holy Spirit. You know, read books. Seek to understand the move of the Spirit. Seek to understand how God moves, how the Holy Spirit does his work. Seek to understand and deepen your faith more in the positive supernatural. I was saying in the first service that some people are so afraid of the negative supernatural, they forget that when we say cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit, we are saying lock in to the person that has the power that is the ultimate. In Egypt, when Moses showed up, there was no lack of power. It's just that the power was pegged at a particular point. When he showed up in the power of the Holy Ghost, because somebody may be listening to me right now, you're afraid of people who are using occultic powers in your industry, in your office. You know, this is the time where they are appointing a lot of people to office. Yeah, some people will get to the office, yeah, hey, no, I, mean, I can't enter that office. So, uh, the GM or the MD that was there before, or the, the governor or the whoever, whatever was there before, they said it's so and so person. So, Go and carry the chair, the table, go and throw it away and buy me another one. Just be wasting the money of the organization. Yeah. It is chair. Even if a demon, even if a devil himself was sitting on it before, all you need to do is to lay hands on that thing. Say, you foul, stinking demon. Get out of here. I'm now here. And I got this legitimately and by the favor of God. So I'm sitting here and nothing happens here. Yeah. And then you sit. Some people are so afraid. The best of the power in Egypt, astrologers and magicians, yeah, people who use black magic, yellow magic, African magic, <laughs> any kind of magic, they showed up. When Moses dropped his rod, it swallowed all of them. All of them put together. That rod is inside you. <laughs> That's the rod that we carry today. You can't have that rod inside you and be jittery. And not be, when Jesus showed up, demons were crying out of people. Saying, why have you come to torment us? Have mercy on us. And then you, that you are a child of God, now running away from demons. It's because you don't understand who you are and what you carry. And until you live in the full realization of what you carry, it cannot manifest. Yeah, it cannot manifest. It can manifest. Glory be to Jesus. Somebody is going through this new week with a deeper revelation of who you are in Christ. With a deeper revelation of the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands to God this morning and tell him, Holy Spirit, fill me up afresh. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at ElevationNG 
to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common. <laughs>